Why do I feel like I linger? Linger between the words to say, eh? To say the words to remember. Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be doing a video about what would happen if Goki Shibukawa were to enter the Kengen Annihilation Tournament. So the premise of this video is pretty much as I've said. We're going to be taking Shibukawa, pinning him up against people throughout the brackets of the Kengen Annihilation Tournament and seeing how he does. Now, just to speed things along, I guess, or uh, make things simpler, I don't think that anybody in the Kingdom Annihilation Tournament is as strong as Oliver Biscuit. That'll be our baseline. See, Oliver Biscuit at his full power is implied by Baki to be about as strong as Yujiro at the very least when Yujiro fought Baki back when he was a kid. Now, if you remember, we did in fact see Yujiro Hanma stop an earthquake with a punch when Baki was a kid. So if Baki is implying that Oliva is that strong, comparing Oliva to that strength that Yujiro has, then Oliva's stronger than everybody in the tournament by quite a bit. And if Shibukawa can manhandle Oliva like he did, with Oliva being that strong, well then, at the very least, Shibukawa's Aiki is stronger than everything in the tournament. But... There is something that kind of makes this even, so to speak. Uh, basically, the, um, the the best thing about Shibukawa being in this tournament is that he's a glass cannon. You know, he's a frail old man. Uh, I think the hardest hit he's ever actually taken was from you know maximum tournament Dopo Orochi, who was considerably weaker than his prime form after being killed by Yujiro Hanma and being brought back to life by Shinogi Koreha. So, while yes, Dopo was still incredibly powerful, Dopo at the time of the Maximum Tournament was nowhere near some of the high tiers, even maybe possibly some of the mid tiers for the King of Annihilation Tournament. Um, he was probably as strong as or stronger than most of the low tiers, but it wouldn't be until, you know, we see him return in, you know, things like, um, uh, I, I guess the next time we really see him get to strut his stuff because you know he's pretty much the same level of strength from the maximum tournament all the way to the end of the ollie jr arc he's basically in that same realm of strength but when we see him come back in baki do he has considerably improved you know baki do and baki do 2018 you know he's he's getting close to where he was in his prime he's he's definitely climbing up there in strength but that's that's that this is this you know not to go off on a tangent here basically what i'm trying to say is shibukawa is a big glass cannon his his aiki is extremely powerful but it's all about who can find a way around it because if you can find a way around his aiki well then you've basically beaten him all right so we'll start off with the round one combatants we'll basically just be using their you know round one combatants and we'll be going down the list so like adam dudley and emai cosmo uh and we'll just keep doing that you know it seems like a pretty quick way to get through the tournament um so yeah we'll, we'll just jump into adam dudley so adam dudley being a very brute strength based fighter who you know throws his weight around he's a strong guy he's you know pretty quick on his feet as well uh he's gonna get demolished by shibukawa this is the exact type of fighter you know i can just go ahead and knock out a lot of the fighters that kind of fall under this purview um you know adam would lose kono haruo has no chance uh let's see i'm just going down the list looking at people who rely solely on brute strength um Morobuchi Gozo, the um, the uh, decathlete, stands no chance. Uh, Julius Reinhold, of course, the you know the the greatest you know strength trumps overall. Strength will always prevail. Not this time, no. Uh, Julius would probably lose the worst out of anyone here. Uh, yeah, uh, Sekibayashi Jun would probably lose pretty badly. Uh, Kyozan Takeru, the um, the ancient sumo fighter, would probably lose pretty badly. Uh, Karu Yoshinari, the fisherman, uh, he, he's got his balance shtick, kind of like Adam has his his trunks, but 
it really won't do anything for him in the way of actually fighting. Uh, Nezu Masami, uh, he's a gang fighter. We never actually got to see him fight that much, but it's assumed that he probably relies on like a street fighting, you know, muscle based fighting style. So he would not be able to do much in this instance. Um, I do think that's it in the terms of like raw brute strength. Everybody else at least has some kind of, you know, martial skill that would possibly give them a chance. So just going, going ahead and knocking those guys out. Um, so moving on to Emai Cosmo, uh, who ironically enough, you know, I'm looking at this list and, you know, I, I'm not really seeing anybody that I'm thinking would fall under this purview. He is probably one of the people on the list that has both the best chance of beating Shibukawa and the worst chance of beating Shibukawa, probably even worse than Julius, because, um, well, <clears throat> Cosmo, Cosmo does grappling. That's his whole shtick. He's a jujitsu master. And Shibukawa, you know, he, he also does, you know, locks and holds and throws and stuff, but in a very different kind of way. The reason why I can see Emai Cosmo winning is because he does have some restraining techniques, some, some holds and chokes and stuff that restrain the arms. If Cosmo can lock Shibukawa's elbows so that he can't like get his hands on Cosmo when Cosmo wins. That that's all he needs to do right there. As long as he can lock Shibukawa's elbows. But unfortunately, if I remember correctly, he only has one technique that does that. And it's his his, his Python hold uh, combined with the rear naked snake choke uh, or the rear naked choke. I do believe that's his only technique that locks the elbow. Because even with the triangle choke that he does against uh, Adam Dudley to win the round, that only locks one arm. You know, he'll lock Shibukawa's, like, right arm or left arm or something, uh, and his neck, and he'll start choking him out. And all Shibukawa has to do is, like, place his hand on Cosmo's leg, and he's, like, paralyzed, or he falls to the ground, or he can easily take his, his uh, leg off. You know, Ike's pretty crazy when it comes to, like, giving people that are super weak lots of power. Like, uh, I, I believe if you were to, like, uh, scale his actual strength, he comes out to, like, a class 50 to class 100 lifting strength. Because, uh, you know, he, he was able to manhandle Oliva, who basically, you know, does weightlifting with, like, Chinook helicopters, you know? Like, he's able to, to pull Chinook helicopters out of the sky with his brute strength alone, and Shibukawa was able to make him look like an absolute fool. So... You know, there, there is the, the issue that Cosmo does basically only have one move that can beat Shibukawa, whereas Shibukawa's entire set can beat Cosmo, because as soon as Cosmo tries to get into a grapple with Shibukawa, Aiki's coming out, and that will go very badly for Cosmo. Cosmo does not have nearly the strength or the feats or the statements or anything to be able to compare with that level of power. You know, Shibukawa's been relevant for 30 years in Baki. You know, Baki's, the manga's been coming out for 30 years, and he's been relevant basically the whole time. With the exception of, like, very early arcs, and, you know, the Raitai, we didn't see him, see him for a while. But, I mean, he was right there in the Ali arc. He came back, he strutted his stuff. Um, yeah, he's, he's been relevant for 30 years in the manga, yet he basically hasn't changed anything he's done. Well, there's a reason why he's been relevant for about 30 years, yet hasn't changed that much. And he's basically the prime example of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> so, on to the next uh, fight, I suppose, in the uh, the Kengen tournament. Uh, Akoya. Now, Akoya is... Ak Akoya has some, some I, I guess, a leg to stand on here. Uh, it's a bit interesting when you talk about him, because he does have the reaction speed necessary to take on Shibukawa. The problem is, Shibukawa and Akoya have similar speeds of reaction. You know, Akoya can dodge a point blank uh, bullet. Uh, Shibukawa scales down from people who can, you know, dodge lightning bolts, and you know, people who compare to that, you know, Yujiro dodged the lightning bolt. People like Baki and Musashi scale directly to him. They were able to keep on par with him and fight him and stuff. And Shibukawa has shown 
two different times that he scales below those kinds of people. You know, Baki was able to blitz him so badly he couldn't see him. Uh, Musashi was able to cut Shibukawa before he was even able to predict uh, Musashi's movements. But that's the thing. Akoya is not faster. Akoya is indeed as fast as or possibly slower than, even in reaction. And his reactions are the best in the whole tournament. But he does scale to or below Shibukawa. And as I just mentioned, due to Aiki, like you have to basically predict the intentions of the person you're fighting so that you can blend your force with theirs and redirect it back at them. You're basically merging your force with theirs. You're not, you're not going against it, you're going with it, and you're guiding it back at them. That's the whole premise of Aiki. Uh, because of this, Shibukawa is basically... I, 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 to, to put it in the simplest possible terms, Okoyo would be fighting somebody with reactions about as fast as his, but with foresight. I mean, we've seen him see through, like, at least, like, six feigns from Dopo, six consecutive feigns from Dopo. You know, he could potentially be able to see six-plus steps ahead, and he has reaction speeds comparable to Akoya. So, you know, Akoya, in theory, could do something. You know, he's got his, his um, Taiho Jutsu, you know, his, his uh, stance of suppression uh, that he kind of ripped from uh, Agito, uh, maybe he could do something there. I, I guess you could argue. Hell, even with Ripper, Ripper usually isn't a technique that's good for, like, taking someone out. It's more to irritate or cause blood loss or something. But that move could take Shibukawa out because he's, you know, an older elderly man. Uh, you know, th there's something to be said there. But I just don't think that Okoya would be able to stand a chance against somebody about as fast as him in reaction who can predict quite a few steps ahead at the very least and you know he let's say he puts up his shield well shibukawa grabs him and it's basically that that's it the fight is over so mokichi robinson's a bit of a um interesting case because uh i mean i guess you could argue that with his footwork he could do something to kind of throw shibukawa off or you know you know, change his trajectory at the last second on, like, a an attack or something. And we never did really get to see what his final move was, that two-finger technique, because Ryan kind of destroyed his ass. But, I mean, I don't really see him doing anything. He's, he's got his judo throw. If he goes for that, he's, he's a goner. Uh, as far as Ryan, there could be an argument that Ryan could present a serious threat for Shibukawa in Omega. But in Ashura, because he's prone to use brute force to attempt to dominate his opponents, I mean, even with removal, not only would he not be strong enough, but he's still not fast enough to outspeed Shibukawa or his predictions. So Ryan would actually lose pretty handily here. Now again, if he were to use some of those Kure techniques, it might be a different story. I, I genuinely haven't really thought about it, but as far as Ryan in Ashura... Who doesn't stand a chance? So in this round, we have two, well, two promising fighters, I guess you could say. Two, two promising chances of taking Shibukawa down. First, we'll go over the one who probably couldn't, but is bit, probably has one of the best chances out of anyone in the tournament, and that's Inaburio. Now, Inaburio, in terms of strength, is about on par with Shibukawa. Now, uh, Shibukawa is an older man, but he is quite powerful. He has taken hits before from the likes of Jack Hanma and, um, you know, Dopo Orochi. He, he has taken some pretty hard hits before, and it's left him in pretty bad condition, but we've seen that he can at least take those hits and keep fighting. Uh, hell, even Kyoge, one of the you know, big, strong people of the new um, Bakido 2018 manga, has been able to land a solid hit or two on Shibukawa, and he's been able to keep trucking even though he's looked god-awful after the fact. Um, so I don't think Inabu's going to be able to take him down, per se. I do think that Shibukawa would be able to beat Inabu before Inabu were to beat Shibukawa, but what gives Inaba such a good chance here is his style. I don't think that Aiki in any way, shape, or form can affect in the Inaba style, the, the attacks with hair. You know, I don't think edging would do anything to 
necessarily mess with Shibukawa. It would throw off his predictions, but he is at least fast enough to react and use Aiki based off of reaction alone. Uh, the somersault kick we see uh, Inabadu would, you know, be subjected to Aiki, and if he were to use it, it would cause him to lose. But things like his natural, you know, Inaba style with the hair, uh, the spider's hair technique, uh, these are, yeah, the, these are viable ways to actually defeat Shibukawa. Uh, the spider's hair technique might actually beat him. It's just that, you know, I, I don't think in terms of actual physical strength, if Inaba were to go that route, he would be able to do it. If he were to attempt to use it to, like, wrap around Shibukawa and, like, keep him down, then that could work. But if he only holds him in place to go and beat him up, that's a no-go. He's gonna lose. Um, but yeah, you know, Inaba has a decent chance. You know, I thought it was worth mentioning. Uh, at the very least, you know, and Chibukawa does have his pressure point techniques, which you have to be careful of. Uh, there's a pressure point in the foot he can press that causes paralysis. Um, there's a precise pressure point on your face that if he presses it, it breaks your tear duct and causes you to drown. You know, he does have these kind of crazy techniques that he can use for pressure points, but again, you know, his main shtick is Aiki, so as Inaba technically does have a way around Aiki, there is something there to say that he might be able to win. Now, as far as Oma, one of the finalists of the Kengan Annihilation Tournament, this one's actually kind of fun. Uh, first off, you know, until he gets past Aiki, he's not going to be able to do anything with his adamantine kata. It's basically making him stronger, but it doesn't really matter if all of your attacks are reflected. Uh, the flame kata... It, it has some stuff, you know, the, the flash fire technique where he you know, creates the after images, that might be able to do something, but again, we kind of saw the same thing with Dopo's attack, you know, where he left after images with his feints, and Shibukawa saw through them all. And, you know, same thing with Phantom Pace, you know, it, it's, a very, it's a very after image, you know, the flame kata, very after image footwork based um, kata in the, uh, the Nico style. Uh, Earth Shrinking, that, that might be able to do something, the ultimate Flame Kata technique. Um, but, but the problem is that it relies on the shifting of one center of gravity, which is something Shibukawa would likely notice. Hell, 13-year-old Baki was able to notice how somebody was shifting their center of gravity just at a glance, you know. Um, though I will say that, you know, surprisingly enough, there is a technique that is not the ultimate technique of the Kata that might actually be able to do something, and that's Raging Fire which allows the user to accelerate to full speed nearly instantly by digging one's toes into the ground. Why that's such a good thing is that, you know, Shibukawa may be able to predict and react, but depending on how fast Oma's able to get, you know, how much speed he's able to build up and how fast he's going, if he has, you know, possessive spirit combined with advance you know his his form that he achieves in the final round and he uses raging fire he may in theory be able to outspeed shibukawa's reaction and his pr prediction doesn't really account for much when he can't move fast enough to do anything about it you know uh so there, there is something there that he could possibly take advantage of but it's not likely that he'd be able to even with the advance and the um possessive spirit combination it's not likely he'd be able to outspeed, you know, Shibukawa, who is, you know, e even in terms of speed, one of the higher tiers in Baki. Now, definitely one of the more interesting aspects of it would be Aiki versus the Redirection Kata. This is one that a lot of people wonder about, especially since they're so similar, you know. Now, the problem with Redirection Kata is that Aiki and Redirection Kata kind of do the same thing, and users of both styles can negate both styles, you know, say he were to use Weeping Willow, you know, to, to alter the trajectory of Shibukawa's attack, you know, he, he could put him off balance and Oma can exploit that moment he creates, but as he's changing the trajectory of the strike, Shibukawa can do it back to him and he does it back to Shibukawa and it would, it would just be an uh, ever-changing, you know, back and forth. Now, we could say that because Shibukawa is, like, 70 years old and he's been training in Aiki since he was, what, like, 16 or 17? So he's got over 60 years of practice, or, or at least over 50 years of practice. We could say that he would be better 
at being able to redistribute and and like tri uh, redirect attacks and stuff and he could eventually overpower the redirection caught as weeping willow or change of scenery where he like basically twists them and hurls them into the air um you know we, we there there are quite a few moves where you can i don't know basically do what ike does um in order to you know achieve different effects you know weeping willow puts the person off balance change of scenery throws them up into the air uh entanglement basically you know allows you to grab onto them and you know dislocate joints or whatever it moves into like a grapple uh flowing edge is pretty good for defense in terms of like you know they were even able to deflect a bullet uh in the manga uh, i believe nico was and marionette is more so about helping the user than it is you know traditionally retrojecting and you know redirecting all this uh you know back and forth but the problem is you know if we do give shibukawa this advantage of years of experience of this being the only thing he does as opposed to you know oma having a couple of years of experience where this is one of four of the things that he does shibukawa would be able to overpower him his his probably his best chance here is chi blockage which is um basically a pressure point that you know attacks the nerves destroys them and paralyzes the opponent the problem is shibukawa can do that too he has that pressure point that he attacks in the foot which might i mind you since it's attacking the foot is more often than not a blind spot considering the range he has to do it that's basically what happened to dopo you know he was about to strike shibukawa in the face when all of a sudden he couldn't move anymore he was paralyzed and Motobe was the one to point out, they're like, wow, look at his foot. And you look down and like nobody was even looking at their feet, but Shibukawa was pressing his toe against the top part of Dopo's foot and Dopo couldn't move. So not only can he do the exact same thing where he can paralyze an opponent, but he can do it without them noticing because he's attacking from a blind spot. So it's, it's really... You would think it would be more even than it is because Redirection Kata is so similar to Aiki, but with... Aiki, or at least with Shibukawa's specifically, his advantage in years and training and his ability to do pretty much everything in Redirection Kata but better, he'd probably win any Redirection Kata fights, though I don't think he could use Aiki to defeat Oma if they just kept doing a back and forth. It would be a battle of attrition and, you know, Oma would actually probably win a battle of attrition. But we see that Oma doesn't solely rely on things like you know redirection kata he's just as likely to go for you know a flame kata to get in and try to you know throw shibukawa off and then he goes in for an adamantine kata you know indestructible or, or iron breaker or something and he gets completely annihilated you know the water kata is another one that could you know present a pretty decent uh i guess you could say challenge uh, because it's very locks and holds based, but just like with uh, with Cosmo, he's got to pin both arms. If he doesn't pin both arms in a manner that stops Shibukawa from touching him, he loses. There's literally nothing he can do. A lot of his uh, combined katas suffer the same, uh, I guess, problem that his other katas do. Uh, and that's not to say Oma couldn't win, because I do think that Oma might be able to pull through here. Uh, considering all of his different abilities that he can rely on you know he can go for a, a lock and you know if he feels like that's not going to work you know maybe he can try for you know a weeping willow or a change of scenery you know something in the uh, the other katas you know he can swap katas he can combine katas he has so much diversity in his moves i feel like there's an argument that he could win here however if you were to ask me i would give the 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 edge at least to shibukawa i would say he would win maybe six times out of ten um though i feel like there could be an extremely strong argument for oma winning six times out of ten but regardless of who gets that six times out of ten i do think that whoever would win would only just narrowly be above a 50 50. but he does have his fire water kata which you know, allows him to combine the flame and water kata to go into like a, a very like footwork based tackle but again, doesn't work because it he would instantly get Aikied. And, you know, Kyoge is showing us right now what that feels like. Flashing Steel does have an argument for being able to tag Shibukawa uh, being faster than his reaction. 
but I don't think it'd be faster than his prediction. And that's the problem. Not only do you have to get around his ability to react to you, you know, as it's happening, you have to get past his ability to uh, predict your intentions. Like, he already knows what you intend to do before you do it. So, not only do you have to outspeed that, you have to outspeed him so badly he can't even react to, like, what you're doing beforehand, you know? It's, it's quite difficult, especially considering, you know, he's probably a, you know, quote-unquote foresight user at the level of at least Kanada, you know? Flickering Flame, again, falls under the purview of having a problem with the user's center of gravity having to shift in order to use the technique. You know, Iron Breaker Revolution, uh, it's, it's, it's a good technique, but you have to throw the opponent to the ground. And that's where that would not work. <laughs> uh, Swimming Swallow! Swimming Swallow is actually a great move, and I do think that Swimming Swallow may actually be able to take out Shibukawa. Because, you know, at this stage, with if we're talking about not only just, like, Oma at the finals, but Oma at the finals with Possessing Spirit slash Advance, and he uses Swimming Swallow, he's already up there in terms of speed with Shibukawa. He's, he's somewhere in that realm. Swimming Swallow is an unpredictable and rapidly altering trajectory attack. Unpredictable. So not only is he up there in terms of speed with Shibukawa, but that also negates one of his biggest tools against Omo, which is his ability to predict through Aiki. So if he's not able to predict the attack, and he's not able to, you know, react to it, which, you know, it's it's about 50-50. They're in the same realm of speed, uh, so to speak. So it's possible that Shibukawa could just see it and be like, okay, let me use Aiki or, you know, let me attempt the finger grab technique that I used on Ollie Jr., you know, something. But there's just as likely a chance that Oma's like, okay, here's my opening, pop, beats him in one hit. Well, the wisp wouldn't work because the startup, the turning sidekick, would spell the end of it. And Demon's Bane is... <sighs> here's the problem with Demon's Bane. Demon's Bane would never work on Shibukawa because Shibukawa doesn't throw punches and kicks unless it's to bait somebody into touching him. And even if, for instance, it did work, Shibukawa could still just react to it. Now, Demon's Bane is formless, so I doubt Shibukawa would be able to predict it per se, uh, though it is possible that just because it's, because it's formless, one wouldn't be able to predict it through things like... Uh, uh, a shifting in the center of gravity or based on movements that they're doing, but Shibukawa predicts through intention, so it's still possible he might be able to predict it. But the main, you know, meat and potatoes of it is it's a counter. Shibukawa would never give him anything to counter. He doesn't punch or kick or anything like that. At the most, you might get jabbed in the throat or poked in the eye or something, but mainly it's, it's pressure points and he himself has a almost 100% counter-based martial art. So I, I think Demon's Bane is possibly one of the worst things he could have used here. And of course, you know, if we're talking about, as I've mentioned before, uh, you know, Oma in the final round with Possessing Spirit and Advance, you know, that's, that's a, as far as every, everybody else in the tournament, you know, save for Kuroki Gensai, that's an entirely different beast. That's a, that man's built different. He, he's... He's got, like, so much power and so much speed behind all of his, his, you know, his frame. He might be able to contend with, you know, people like Shibukawa who are exorbitantly physically weak for somebody, you know, in this level of Baki. You know, he's considered one of the high tiers of Baki, at least one of the mid tiers of Baki. He's exorbitantly weak physically for somebody of that stature, but he's got decent speed. He's got his predictions, but, you know, Oma's, Oma's basically at this point strong enough to kill Shibukawa in one hit. So that's why Swimming Swallow is such a good thing, is because with his speed and his different techniques, like his um, Raging Fire, you know, if he's in Possessive Spirit slash Advanced Mode, he's already strong enough to kill Shibukawa in one hit, and he's already fast enough to match Shibukawa's speed. Now all he's got to do is get around his predictions. Well, he can use Raging Fire to basically 
end up like right in front of Shibukawa faster than Shibukawa can react, but maybe not faster than he can predict. Problem is, it doesn't matter if he's predicting Oma's, you know, immediate arrival, his his full acceleration right into Shibukawa, because he can't predict the swimming swallow. And he'd get his one hit off, and he'd win. So that's really all it takes there. And, I, you know, Oma could, in theory, come up with this, um, this plan of attack. He's a pretty, you know, in terms of combat, he's a pretty intelligent guy. You know, I, like I said, I'd probably give this... You know, 60%, 40% difficulty, you know. Uh, Oma either wins this with, you know, 60% difficulty or Shibukawa does. But, you know, it, it's definitely a, a, a very difficult fight for the winner, whoever that may be. Uh, and it's a very interesting fight as well because, you know, I can see Oma being like, oh, you want to use a kind of redirection-based martial art? I can do that too. And then getting completely stomped because Shibukawa has, like, 50 years of experience, whereas he only has, like, what, five or six? I think, if even that. Um, but there are just so many different possibilities that Oma could use with his massive arsenal that, you know, he could combine and mix and master his techniques, and, and he could come out on top. It's very possible. Uh, so if anyone were to win this tournament, you know, if Shibukawa were in the tournament, probably be Oma. Wakatsuki... Takeshi would get utterly annihilated. He would get defeated almost as badly as Julius. And you know, you may be thinking, oh, but Wakatsuki has, you know, his his karate. You know, he's he's a technical fighter. You know, he does have strength, but he's a technical fighter. Well, here's the problem. Let's say, for instance, you know, I'm, I'm willing to put everybody at the peak. So Oma Oma would would have been fighting without his heart disease but with the strength he had in the finals, and all of his techniques and his understanding of martial arts. Let's do that for Wakatsuki too. He's fresh, he's got no injuries, his face is fine, he doesn't look like uh, the product of a meme video gone wrong. Uh, I mean, he, he's, he's in perfect condition, but he's at the peak of his superiority, which means he has his blast core. Well, if he doesn't go for his blast core, <laughs> he's not better at karate than Dopo. Let's get that straight right now. In terms of actual karate skill, Dopo and Kuroki Gensai are, are they're, they're basically clones of each other, you know. Gensai can see, like, tens of steps into the future. You know, Dopo can predict what somebody's going to do while he's hypnotized, you know. And, and they both have very similar techniques as well. You know, Dopo and uh, Kuroki both have the Sachin. You know, Dopo has the, the new kite that he uses. And Kuroki has his Devil's Lance. They're, they're practically very similar characters, if not the same. So, yeah, let, let's not pretend that Wakatsuki can outskill Shibukawa here when Shibukawa basically skill dunked on Dopo. Um, but yeah, if he doesn't use Blast Core, if he doesn't use his almighty technique Blast Core, he's gonna get defeated. He's gonna get, you know, just his attacks are gonna be redirected. Uh, he's gonna get grappled and. You know, pinned to the ground with crazy shit that Shibukawa always does. But if he uses Blast Core, he's gonna get hospitalized. It's gonna be horrible because Shibukawa's just gonna reflect it back at him. It's gonna be like Demon's Bane. It, it's it's gonna be pretty bad for for old Wakatsuki. Uh, so yeah, he doesn't really stand any chance of actually winning, especially without something like Foresight. And don't get me wrong, he's got the stats, he just doesn't have the skill, which is basically the problem that most people in this tournament have when fighting Shibukawa. Sawada, uh, he's got great balance, and he's got a, a, a really great ability of being able to, you know, be flexible, and you know, he's, he's not weak either, don't get, don't get it twisted. He's a pretty powerful fighter in of himself, and especially that G2 technique. And that'll most certainly be the end of him, because he's going to use that G2 technique, and Shibukawa's going to reflect that either back at him, or he's going to flip him with it, or he's going to catch it and put it in a lock. Yeah, no, uh, unfortunately, Sawada does not stand a chance here, especially not with G2, which is a very momentum-based attack, and, you know, Aiki is maybe not completely centered around using momentum against an enemy, but that is... A pretty significant portion of the uh, the martial art is basically using an opponent's momentum against him because in momentum there is power and in power there is power to reflect 
So that that's a bit of an issue for old Sawada. Yeah, Muteba. He's 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 all right. I mean, he's got his predictions through hearing. Um, he oh, what else? Uh, he's he's got his senses, but don't really do anything. Um, the only real technique I can remember him using was the uh, the heart jab, where you can basically make someone's heartbeat arrhythmatic, which causes them to like have a heart attack and die. Um, but I don't. Yeah, it's not it's not gonna get in. You know, he's gonna try it, and Shibukawa is gonna get him in a wrist lock and flip him. You know, um, yeah, if 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 on the off chance that Mutebo was able to get a hit in, then, you know, yeah, he, he'd be able to beat Shibukawa. But up until that point, no, I, I don't think there's I don't think he has anything that would really be able to, to get past Shibukawa's prediction. And it's uh, and the Aiki that goes along with it. <laughs> Mikuro is another one that's both really good and really bad because He's an entirely grappling-based fighter, which is horrible for him, but his ability to negate pain is actually kind of useful. Um, now, the problem would be is that while Shibukawa doesn't inherently kill, as we see with Dopo, neither of them is above killing if the situation should require it. He doesn't kill in his fights, but if he were to fight somebody like Meguro, who is attempting to kill him, well, then things might be different you know it is quite easy to forget because he's all joking around and you know he's the mystical Ike guy it, it is kind of easy to forget that not only was he a fighter in world war ii where he killed many people but he also worked as an assassin for a while where he killed people for money so you know he's not exactly above killing meguro which is basically all he can do in short of you know stopping him if he doesn't kill Meguro, then the fight's just going to drag on and he will lose a battle of attrition. I do think is going to die long before that ever happens. A battle of attrition where Shibukawa loses. Yoroi Zuka saw Peng, the most enthusiastic punching bag since punching bag from Smash Bros. Yeah, no, he's not really going to be able to do much here either. Uh, as far as his, you know, ultimate technique, the Hammer of Burma, most people can dodge out of the way of that with just reactions alone, so Shibukawa is definitely going to be able to reflect that back at him, and since that is his strongest attack, you know, even with his extremely hard, you know, clenched bones, that's still going to hurt quite a bit. I mean, we saw what that did to, like, straight up concrete, fractured it six weeks to Sunday, and I, I mean, I don't know, it's, if he gets that reflected back at him, it's definitely going to do some crazy damage, and He's not really going to be able to hurt Shibukawa. I mean, the, the best thing you have is, like, we saw him predict multiple attack outcomes uh, against uh, uh, Karo. But, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, beyond that kind of simple analytical prediction he has, and, you know, beyond a very easy-to-read-and-reflect move, you know, he doesn't really have much. All he's going to do is gonna, he's, he's going to get beat up. He's going to get really badly hurt. I mean... He has his muscles, which will, you know, help him. He has his bones, which are harder than steel. But that only does so much when, you know, your bones may be harder than steel, but the force that you're being hit with is the force that you're generating. So, I mean, I, I don't know. The only thing that his uh, strong bones are going to do is make his beating take longer. <laughs> this one is an interesting one. Because we have Mikazuchi Rei. One of, if not the fastest people in the Kengen Ashura tournament. He was even able to blitz Kuroki Gensai and Setsuna. So, this guy is definitely crazy in terms of speed. I mean, the man has, quote-unquote, become lightning itself. Um, but yeah, as far as his uh, list of moves, he's actually got a pretty good kit considering his speed. Uh, now, he would be faster than Shibukawa. I don't think he'd be faster than his predictions, but... I mean, hell, if he was able to blitz Kuroki, then he's probably able to blitz Shibukawa as well. Uh, and Shibukawa would have to rely, you know, solely on his predictions, just like Kuroki Gensai did. But I do think that because of his, you know, his pressure point-based techniques, I feel like that could become an issue for Shibukawa. And, uh, you know, dreamwalking might be an issue, but again, you know, the whole afterimage thing doesn't seem to be quite effective against somebody who predicts based in, on intention. Like, if you already know what the person intends to do, 
then, you know, seeing them do things that aren't what they intend to do, you know they're just doing feigns or they're, that's just an after image. So, you know, look elsewhere. It's like, okay, they're going to strike me with their right hand while they're next to me. Everything they do in between when they start moving and that move, you know it's nothing's going to come of it, so you don't even need to concern yourself. So Dreamwalking, I can only see that working with minimum effect. Uh, Sunfire. Sunfire is, is a pretty decent technique. If, if that gets reflected, then, you know, Mikazuchi Ray will be dealing with minimum damage because it's 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 a low damage strike with high accuracy that targets pressure points you know the whole point is it's pressure point based same with the thunderclap you know it's it's all pressure point based techniques so the the good thing about that is having those reflected back at you the force of those attacks is negligible at best uh now the biggest thing is the lightning flash if Ray has the lightning flash reflected at him, it's gonna drop him. It's gonna drop him pretty badly. I mean, he could keep going if he if he puts himself like if he's put under the hypnotized state, he could keep going. Hell, he might even be able to keep going just based off of his insane stamina. But that's the fastest style using the fastest technique, the the Raishin style become like lightning itself, lightning flash, the fastest technique in the style, and while yes, it is extremely easy to predict, I don't think Shibukawa's gonna be able to survive the first hit. If he could somehow survive one lightning flash, he'd have victory assured. You know, Sunfire, all he has to do is reflect it, it's not gonna do much in the way of hurting Ray, but it's better to reflect it in order to not get hit by it than try to tank a pressure point based attack. Same thing with Thunderclap, as long as you can reflect it, you're not getting hit by it, and that's what really matters there. Lightning Flash. It's it's basically going to be a combination of what happened to uh, Nezu and what happened to Shibukawa when he was fighting Ali Jr. He's going to get popped on the chin, and that's going to be it. He's He will have lost. So, I, I've got to say, I, I think that Mikazuchi Rei, maybe possibly out of everybody in the entire tournament, has the best chance of winning. You know, Oma's got a pretty good chance too, but there's a, there's probably just as many things uh, that Oma could do wrong that he could do right. Whereas Mikazuchi Rei, he has a very limited move pool, and Lightning Flash is almost guaranteed to come out. It's one of his signature techniques, it's one of the ones that we see him use the most, and it's definitely the one that's going to have the best chance of winning and the most effect against Shibukawa. So I do think that this would be something closer to like, oh, I don't know, like... Mikazuchi Rei might even win 9 times out of 10, something crazy like that. Uh, so I do think that Mikazuchi Rei would defeat Shibukawa. So just to quickly address why Rihito would stand no chance against Shibukawa... Um, I mean, in essence, he would basically just do to uh, Rihito what he did to uh, Kosho Kareha during their fight in the Maximum Tournament, you know. The, the Razor's Edge requires him to build up speed to slice with his fingers, you know, similarly to how, you know, the cord cut requires somebody to penetrate the neck and then rip out the, uh, the quote-unquote cord, like the nerve or the vein or whatever. Shibukawa would basically just use Finger Grab or Aiki to stop the razor's edge before it builds up speed and he would just flip him lock him whatever he's ba Rito would basically be at his mercy as soon as uh, shibukawa gets a hold of that finger which would be easy because he has the ability to predict intention now kuroki gensai here's another one that i think would be able to beat shibukawa uh now Dopo was close because he had a technique that allowed him to stop Shibukawa from reading his intention. With the Bodhisattva Fist, Shibukawa couldn't read what he was going to do. You know, he, he mentions, you know, when your mind is that silent, you know, basically implying that the reason he got hit by the Bodhisattva Fist is that he couldn't read the intention. He didn't know what was going to happen. Kuroki Gensai is a bit of the opposite. It's not that he's stopping Shibukawa from reading his intention, but more so that Kuroki Gensai, with his motionless technique, 
can actually read Shibukawa's intention farther than Shibukawa can read his. So Shibukawa would be able to read Kuroki's intentions for attacks and reactions up to a certain point, but Kuroki Gensai would be able to read farther than Shibukawa. He'd be able to take Shibukawa's predictions into account and react accordingly. So it's not that Shibukawa can't read him, like what, would hap what happened with Dopo, in which case, you know, if it's a situation like that, then Shibukawa can just do what he did against Dopo. You know, he can take a hit, you know, try to mitigate it as much as possible by turning in the same direction as the attack, but he can take the hit and then use Aiki to attack. He can do that, though I guess if he were to take a direct hit from Kuroki Gensai, he'd probably die. But, you know, he could do that against somebody who resisted his ability to analyze intention, but that's not what Kuroki's doing. Kuroki is reading farther ahead than him. So while his normal kit, you know, there's nothing really that sticks out. He has his straight punch st six strikes, which, you know, normally speaking could all easily be reflected. Uh, Senchin is going to do nothing for him because it's defensive and Chibukawa has his counter base martial art. And of course the Devil Lance's signature move, it you know, it doesn't really do anything. It's not really special from any other kind of attack other than that it does piercing damage, but, you know, Shibukawa could reflect that all the same. It's really his motionless that makes his entire kit a threat. You know, everything that would, you know, not land before, the straight punch six strikes or the devil's lance, you know, everything that wouldn't land before, now it can all land just fine because he can read farther ahead. So I think... You know, Kuroki Gensai has just as good a chance of defeating Shibukawa as Rei does. You know, I, I think that they, they're both 9 out of 10, if not 10 out of 10. You know, there's, you could make the argument that there's nothing that Shibukawa could possibly do to beat them. But yeah, I, I think that Rihito would get utterly annihilated. He'd get clowned on. Uh, but, you know, Gensai would definitely take the W. Now, as far as Nikaido Ren... Uh, he's quite interesting, because normally his his normal attacks, like Guangda, Lan, Last Ditch Kick Up, none of them would really do anything. Everything is viable to getting reflected. You know, there's nothing that stands out. However, his secret technique, Quilong, if he were to be able to get that off, you know, and actually put Shibukawa under his spell, well, then he wins. It's as simple as that. Shibukawa isn't strong enough to take un like defenseless unguarded blows from somebody of Nikaido Ren's strength and if he's under a hypnosis he can't really defend himself uh, if this were Dopo then I would say it's a different story you know Dopo we've seen him under a hypnosis be able to defend himself but this is Shibukawa his um, I guess you could say his ability to predict works quite differently and at the very least we don't have a confirmed concrete feat of him being able to defend himself while under the um, uh, the hypnosis of an opponent. So I do think that Nikaido Ren would actually be able to win this, so long as he can get off the Quilong technique. As for Kiryu, I mean, what else could be said except he's basically in the exact same boat as Oma. There's a lot he could do right here, you know, he has his blink technique, he has uh, the raging fire technique, two of the best movement abilities I think he could use against Shibukawa. Um, and of course, you know, he, he can combine Blink with uh, Mingling of the Tiger and the Fox, which is a, a combination of the Rashaska's Palm with um, the Swimming Swallow. So not only would that be absolutely devastating, because it's a bunch of Rashaska Palms, but they're also, again, unpredictable and quickly altering trajectory moves because of the Swimming Swallow. Uh, if, he has, if he's got that and Falling Demon activated... And, I mean, he wins. He wins right there. He could go Raging Fire into Swimming Swallow while he's got Fallen Demon activated, he wins. He could go uh, Blink into Mingling of the Tiger and Fox, and if he's got Fallen Demon activated, he wins. I, I'm, I mean, hell, I'm pretty sure he could win using those techniques even without Fallen Demon. But if he goes for anything else, like a Rashaska's Palm, or Rashaska's Soul, even the true Rashaska's Palm, uh, he tries to throw Shibukawa off course with a flash fire and get in an indestructible he challenges him to Weeping Willow, even worse off than Oma. Yeah, if he goes for any of those, he would lose. So he has some combos and techniques that could really completely deal with Shibukawa like child's play. But he's got a lot of other stuff, 
some of the stuff he's even more likely to use, like Roshaska's Palm, which is his, basically his ultimate technique, uh, or at least his, his signature technique, um, he's more likely to at least start with those techniques. If he were to be able to, you know, keep going and fight with Shibukawa, uh, and he could learn how Aiki works, there's a there's a case to be made that he would win. Yeah, I mean, it's like Oma. It's, it's basically 60-40, and it could go either way. Either, either Shibukawa wins six times out of ten, or my boy uh, uh, Kiryu Setsuno wins six times out of ten. You know, I, I, I would say it's 50-50, but there is there is one with a clear advantage here. Um, you know, in either scenario, you could say that Kiryu is the uh, the one with the clear advantage because he has two techniques that basically allow him to you know almost teleport in front of people of similar speeds, which Shibukawa is. Um, and he's got Fallen Demon that make him stronger and faster, of course, so that, that presents an issue. He's, he's quite the fast character, which we know Shibukawa has difficulty dealing with characters exorbitantly faster than him, as we see with, you know, Ali Jr. He can predict, but, you know, there's, there's a limit to that as well. Again, we see that with, with Musashi. Um, and he's got two techniques that are unpredictable, so Shibukawa's main meat and potatoes gets thrown out the window. You know, Aiki is, at the very least, less effective against uh, abilities he can't predict. Uh, so if the dude's as fast as him, possibly faster, and he can't predict the attacks, that's pretty much Shibukawa disassembled right before your very eyes. However, Kiryu also has a lot of moves that he's more likely to go for that can be easily predicted and easily dealt with. So it, it really does all depend on, you know, how you think the scenario would go. So, Chiba and Hatsumi. Uh, as far as Hatsumi goes, I do plan to make a dedicated video to this. So, uh, if you want to watch the full dedicated video I'm going to make and you don't want to have it spoiled, uh, you might want to skip, you know, I don't know, something like a minute or two ahead. Uh, this shouldn't take too long. But, in essence, I'll go over Chiba first. Um, the problem with Chiba is that uh, nothing that he has shown so far, he is a copier, he can copy techniques given to ours, um, but nothing that he's shown so far would present any difficulty for Shibukawa to completely annihilate him. Uh, his Akito was pitiful, uh, I mean everything else he, he had portrayed was, you know, bare minimum as far as, you know, impressiveness, and all of the techniques and abilities he copies are... You know, of his own strength, which he about scales to old man Shibukawa in strength, you know, considering Shibukawa took a punch from Dopo, um, and he took hits from Jack, but regardless, um, basically the, the problem here is that, you know, Chiba is a jack-of-all-trades, master of none, so he'd get thrown away like trash. Uh, now for Hatsumi Sen, the two Akito users face off. Here's the problem. Looking at Hatsumi's skill list and his move list, he literally has nothing that would put him in anywhere near the realm of Shibukawa, and here's why. Let's say, for example, we look at Gathering Cloud Triple Strike. Three rapid blows in a succession. All three of them can be reflected. Easily. Then he has just basically hit himself three times. So... That's not going to work. Uh, let's try 100 meetings throw. Uh, Hatsumi grabs onto the opponent's wrist. Oh, there we go. He just got, he, you know, Chibukawa grabs onto his wrist. And he is now under the control of somebody with a class 100 lifting strength. You know, somebody who can easily overpower somebody that, you know, weight lifts using Chinook helicopters. Or like Sikorsky CH-53E helicopters. You know, it's... it's the man overpowered somebody who can weightlift with Super Stallion helicopters. I don't, I don't know what to, to say about that. Even the Star Drop, the culmination of all of his techniques, it's, it's probably his best one. Hatsumi puts his uh, hand under his opponent's chin. Bam! There you go. He's, he's now under the control of, of Shibukawa's insane lifting strength capabilities with Aiki. Uh, his, his Aikido is a lot more realistic, but that means it suffers in the way of strength, and... Shibukawa would basically ragdoll Hatsumi. Now as for uh, good old Doc Hajime, 
uh, and Bando, I actually think they would both win. Or at least it's very likely that they win. Uh, you know, Hanafusa also can't feel pain like Meguro. Um, but he also has like a bunch of different things like his his disease, his or yeah, his disease that he has. Uh, he also practices pressure points, which makes it difficult to kind of reflect them in any meaningful way. Uh, he has that explosive heel kick, which could present a big difficulty. Uh, he fights using blades, which, you know, technically Ike was invented to go up against people who are wielding blades. But, you know, there could still become some issues. And yeah, you know, overall, I do think at the very least it would come out as a draw. Maybe Shibukawa could defeat him, possibly even kill him. But, of course, he would just be able to, you know, bring himself back to life with his heart machine and whatever have you. Uh, he's just got so much in the, in terms of, you know, the, the one thing that I, I really think puts him over Shibukawa here is that disease thing. He could, in theory, he could, in theory, just cut himself and make the disease airborne and kill Shibukawa. So there, there's just too many variables, you know, in a straight fight, yeah, Shibukawa would dominate him, but this isn't a straight fight. This is a fight with Doc Hajime, you know, it, it's, what are you going to do? The, the dude just has so much to be able to, you know, deal with people who use, like, martial arts in general, really. Uh, and in terms of Bando, to put it as simply as possible, uh, Shibukawa can't really overcome the same weakness in Aikido that Hatsumi did. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he can't get close to him without getting slapped. Those slaps are going to kill him in one hit, no doubt. Uh, tear him in half, uh, and yeah, I mean, there's, there's, you know, you can't really do anything with prediction, because you, you try to grab onto the hand, you're gonna lose a hand, uh, yeah, he really doesn't have anything to get in on Bando when he starts using those whip strikes, I mean, if you can take him out before he starts using whip strikes, uh, maybe there's an argument that Shibukawa could win, but up until that point, those whip strikes will annihilate Shibukawa, and there's nothing he can do. All right, we're down to the last four fighters in the tournament. We have Gaolang Wang Sawat and Kanada Tsukichi. Um, I don't really think there's anything either of them can do. I mean, Gaolang has his predictions, uh, but he doesn't really have... Uh, uh, he doesn't have the ability to predict ahead like Kuroki does. You know, Shibukawa should still be able to predict better than him. Uh, and probably his main problem, both of his martial arts, Muay Thai and boxing, are both hard styles, which are, you know, hard countered by Shibukawa's Aiki. So I don't really think that Gao Ling has a, has a leg to stand on in this race. Uh, and Canada, <laughs> it, it hurts me to say this because I do like Canada, but Canada is basically a Walmart brand version of Shibukawa. He would get annihilated. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's really nothing more to say there. Gao Ling gets beat because he's you know, in essence, he does have skill, don't get me wrong. He's probably one of the most skilled people in the tournament, but he's a very hard stance fighter. You know, he's very physical strength based. And, you know, the same could be said about Kuroki, but the only reason Kuroki even stood a chance against Shibukawa is because he predicts ahead. But because he predicts ahead, you know, Kuroki dominates. It's the one thing that stops Aiki as a whole. If you can't predict ahead and you use a hard style, you're going to lose. And finally, we have Kano Agito and Okubo Naoya. Now, Okubo, I would see getting defeated. He would you try to use his synergy. He'd, you know, go for striking. He'd go for a grapple, and that would be the end of it. You know, maybe he gets his attack reflected at him. He's okay. He can keep fighting. Um, but even if he tries to switch to a grapple, if he tries to switch to a grapple, the fight is over then and there. You know, Shibukawa's going to lock him down, and he's going to submit him, and that'll be the end of it. Um, so, unfortunately, Synergy actually kind of works against Okubo at this point. Now, with Agito, uh, that's actually a bit of an interesting argument, because he has his adaptation, and it could be said that there there is a way that he could, in theory, uh, get away with adapting to Aiki, but I personally don't necessarily see that happening. Now, Formless is probably his best chance of winning here. Um, there, there is still the um, the contention, not even I know, if he is able to, um, you know, be predicted while he's using Formless um, by Shibukawa's means, so to speak. Uh, Dragon Shot 
doesn't really hold a candle to anything. Just to clarify, you know, Kano's greatest technique, uh, it doesn't really do anything special in the way of uh, Aiki. It can, it's the one inch punch. That one inch is all Aiki needs to reflect it, so that doesn't really do anything. Uh, but in terms of just his general style of formless to martial arts and his switching and his predictive ability, I do think at the very least there's a chance. I'm willing to acknowledge that there's a chance that Kano could actually defeat uh, Shibukawa. I mean, hell, he defeated Gao, which we're saying Shibukawa could do that too. And he only narrowly lost to Kuroki, and we're saying Kuroki would dominate. So in theory, with his predictive ability and his ability to possibly throw off Shibukawa's analytical prediction, Agito could win. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I want to thank my little pog champs for watching. Uh, stick around on the channel. Give me a, a like on the video if you liked it, a comment on the video asking me, oh, I want to see this character go through the tournament or whatever. Uh, subscribe if you want to see this kind of content come out more. Uh, ring that notification bell if you want to stay up to date on videos, if you want to make sure that you're getting the videos in your box and you're able to view them as they come out. You know, you know, do all the all the great things for YouTube. Uh, and yeah, I, I, again, I want to give a special thanks to uh, Weebman. Uh, he is probably one of the main reasons I've started doing this because this kind of thing is so fun. I love watching his videos. I love theorizing and talking with my friends about this kind of thing. So, you know, I, I, I'm going to basically do my run of it as well, give my, my stance on each of the fights. Uh, Shibukawa did pretty good against the Annihilation Tournament. We only had like a handful of people that um, could beat him, and we had a fair amount of people that at least stood a chance. Um, so yeah, you know, thank you guys for watching. Again, I really do appreciate your viewership and you guys sticking around and watching. And I, if nobody has any suggestions for next time, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I do know I'm probably going to do some characters in the Maximum Tournament, some characters in the... Um, the Annihilation Tournament, some characters in the Raitai Tournament, and some characters in the Purgatory Tournament. And we're we're going to see how things go from here. We're going to be doing verse swapping. So like Kengen characters in Baki, Baki characters in Kengen. And of course we're going to give Kengen characters a chance in tournaments that they weren't able to participate in. And we're going to do the same for Baki characters. I've just got so much stuff lined up. You know what, I might be able to keep a consistent uploading schedule here in the future, but I make no guarantees. Thank you guys for sticking with me no matter what happens, and I will see you guys in the next one.